Welcome to episode 173 of Vegas Revealed. Bill Maher is back in Las Vegas. We chat with a stand-up comedian and political commentator. Coming up, you won't want to miss it. Plus, Carrie Underwood returns to Resorts World, and we were there to toast the country star at a champagne reception. And a new smoke-free slot section opens at the Plaza downtown. It's also a perfect place for you to amp up your Vegas social media. Plus, what is all this talk of aliens landing in Las Vegas? I'm into this. <laughs> it's all coming up this week on Vegas Revealed. Welcome to Vegas Revealed, episode 173. Sean McAllister here, along with Dana Roselli, mm -hmm. on video. I know. We decided, you know what? Why don't we do a video version? Because of all your support, it's allowed us to take a little bit of extra time to be able to do this. We really want to amp it up, but let's just start here. Yeah, so if you're listening to us like you normally would on the Vegas Revealed audio podcast, you can also go to our Vegas Revealed YouTube channel and see us. Yeah, why not, right? Yeah. Hey, and we want to give a big shout out, speaking of support, to Tracy Jansen, who is now supporting us. She is a monthly subscriber. Thank you so much for your donation. We love it. Tracy has a great company called Targeted Tax Relief. We use her as our personal tax person as well. If you have tax issues, you definitely want to check them out. And another subscriber, Omar, we mentioned him uh, a week or so ago. Um, he reached out to us. He's a music teacher, and that's why his little uh, subscriber icon is a music note, which we were wondering what the music connection was. <laughs> uh, but he was actually just here in Las Vegas with his wife, and we were messaging yeah. and hearing details about what they were up to and where they were going. So, Omar, hope you had a great vacation. Yeah, I must say, my my it wasn't the music note for me. It, it had music in his email address. Oh, so I, that's okay. why I kind of like, so okay. I, I want to act like I was so smart to think that he was in music. <laughs> <laughs> I did have a little hint. <laughs> hey, um, the big news this week here in Las Vegas has been mm. the fact that we now have a Stanley Cup for the Golden Knights. I mean, we could go on. If you guys follow us on social media, you're probably following all the excitement. Maybe you're sick of all our posts or maybe you're enjoying them. I don't know. But we have been having a blast. We went out in front of the arena for game five and we kind of had a feeling that we were going to take home the cup that yeah. night. We didn't want to jinx it, but so many people came out. We decided to be out there for it. And I just thought, you know what? We've got to be there in some way. And Thank goodness we were, because I think both of you have said it was one of the best nights of our life. I mean, it was just such, it was a happy, joyful experience. You know, you see championship victory celebrations erupt in other cities, and sometimes there's looting, sometimes there's fires being set, cars being flipped over, windshields being smashed. We didn't have any of that on game night. It and was the happiest giant crowd I have ever been a part of. Yeah. Nine goals that night for us. Oh. We got to hear the horn in the arena, and then when it hit the TV, we would hear it again. Everyone was going nuts. The camaraderie, the drinks were flowing, the costumes, the beads. I mean, <laughs> what a blast. But I love that we waited all the way till the very end before even celebrating, like yeah. times 10. You know, we waited till that game was over. I thought that was very respectful of the Las Vegas fans as well. We always do it right. Um, and even you and I were going, okay, well, what are we doing? What's the plan? But you know what? We just went with the flow of the crowd, and it was... You know, we took we took home the cup. There were chants of "Go Knights, go!" and then it was "We are the champions." It when having ten, eleven, twelve thousand people outside of the arena. I think it might have even been more than that. Yeah, just seeing the aerial shots of the crowd. Mm -hmm. You know, after the fact, but I mean, those videos of the entire crowd singing "We are the champions." That was it. Was one thing to be down in it. But then to have that pulled back perspective when you see the entire crowd, that was something else. I mean, that was a special, special night and a special season. So thank you, Golden Knights. Yeah. 
And uh, now we've got some hardware to show for all the hard work. I know. So we de we definitely do. And it's been making its way to every nightclub in Vegas this week. <laughs> so that's been a lot of fun to watch. Everything is so Vegasy, you know? It is. Um, I did just briefly want to mention, um, first of all, why the, the just why the team is so special to so many of us that have been here since 2017, and, and that's because we had a tragic, tragic shooting here in Las Vegas. I don't want to bring it down a step, but I just want to say that the attachment to this team has meant so much to us because this team kicked off right after that terrible mass shooting happened on the Las Vegas Strip, and they immediately, you know, these players came from all over, you know, and, and they immediately jumped in and were like, what can we do? How can we help? You know, we had first responder night. Um, they started every game with something that they knew was important for the community. Immediately, people just started coming to the Strip, filling T-Mobile Arena, and everyone has just stayed with this team since the beginning. So it's a really... Uh, emotional moment for us in that way as well. Yeah, and even uh, season one, the team dedicated a, a banner to the 58 lives mm -hmm. that were lost. And you still see that banner hanging up in the rafters inside T-Mobile Arena with the yeah. 58 stars. So, I mean, it is... That moment is not a forgotten moment no. for Las Vegas or for the players. And like you said, Dana, that is why there is such a, a mm -hmm. strong bond between the community and the team, which is really unlike really any other team that there is it's in true. professional sports, amateur too. Yeah. And, and, you know, we came so close the first season, but didn't make it. So it's like, and I know I'm, you know, there's the, the smack talk from the other side. Oh, six years, you know, and you got a Stanley cup and, must be so difficult. It's like, well, you know, we, th there is more to it. And yeah. that's the reason that we're so emotional um, is, you know, any win in in sports is, is exciting and emotional, but I feel like it's just a little different for us here in Las Vegas. So congratulations to the guys. And we look forward to celebrating. Uh, it's going to be a all week long. Yeah, it's uh, it's going to be a year long celebration. <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> I have a feel the immediate celebration until the guys get tired. I mean, they're out there. Uh, they've got to sleep at some point. <laughs> yeah, but it's probably better than actually playing game after game after game after game like they've been doing. Sometimes I look at them and I'm like, how are they? Just had a game two nights ago. They just had a game yesterday. Then they're practicing and, just, and they're playing for three hours. It's exhausting. Well, listen, preseason is going to be sneaking uh, up on them here in another like month and a half. That's true. They're going to have preseason games in September. Kick off. <laughs> in October. That's not <laughs> far away. Um, but we do want to mention, uh, you may have heard us talk about uh, our Vegas Revealed Amazon mm -hmm. shop. Um, it's right there on the Amazon website. There's a link down in our show notes. We've uh, put a special section on there uh, featuring championship merchandise and gear that you can uh, purchase to celebrate the, the Golden Knights' historic victory. Um yeah. So it's it's fun. It's exciting. It is. And people are on the hunt for that merch because we've seen run into people that are hitting all the stores locally and stuff and saying, oh, they're out of this one and that one. But, you know, check Amazon. They're constantly restocking. And we've got that link up so you can just browse around. We've, we picked the good stuff. We think that you would want. Yeah. We do receive a small commission from uh, any purchases on that shop. But check it out. Well, again, the link is down in our show notes. Browse around and see if there's anything you like. Yeah. Um, something else that's been going on here in Las Vegas, <laughs> aside from hockey, is a little bit out of this world. <laughs> a little bit. I mean, you are obsessed with this story. And it, I'm trying to get into it, but I don't know why. I'm like, whatever. <laughs> but there are some people who have a fascination with the whole idea of aliens, uh, some that don't believe it. I don't really know, necessarily know how I feel. However, um, this story has been going on around our area for at least the last three weeks, and it's really started to like make its way. Now people have like doctored videos and all sorts of stuff that I've been seeing on social media. But the original story goes like this. I'll let you explain it since you're fascinated. Okay, there's a, <laughs> a family in uh, northwest. Las Vegas, in the northwest part of the Las Vegas Valley. Uh, and one night, there was this bright light that was captured mm -hmm. on uh, police body camera footage mm -hmm. that came streaking down from the sky. And this family ended up calling 911 and saying, hey, this alien spacecraft just landed in our backyard. And there are two nine or 10 foot 
non-human figures roaming around in our backyard right now. The police came. The police sounded. Big eyes, nine foot or ten foot and big eyes. And, and big they, eyes. Yeah. Big shiny eyes. Okay. So it sounds like an alien to me. Okay. So the police show up and they were a little concerned about it too. The one guy was like, listen, if you have True. these nine or 10 foot guys coming back, call someone else because I am not coming back to your house. <laughs> but he did say my partner saw something similar on his body cam. And so he's like, normally I might not entertain your story, but yeah. I'm curious. What did you see? And the so. family has posted their own... Uh, recollections of what happened that night on YouTube. You can search that. Um, it has just evolved. There was a headline <laughs> just the other day that uh, police have installed, allegedly, uh, security cameras on the roof of this family's house okay. in case these extraterrestrial <laughs> visitors decide to come and, and visit again. I think this is, I mean, listen, well, I mean, Las Vegas has a strong connection to Area 51. <laughs> There's always weird things happening in the sky here with all of our military yeah. installations right. around here in Nevada. Um I don't know. I okay. think it's a fun thing to follow. Okay. I have not had aliens knocking on my door yet, no, though. No, not yet. And the guy sounded pretty calm on the 911 call, I'm just going to say. <laughs> if I saw a nine-foot creature with big eyes in my backyard, I'm not sure I would calmly call 911. I would be frantic. Yeah. That's just me. Doesn't mean I'm like everyone else. Whatever. <laughs> Let's move on now to Bill Maher. We've been getting so many messages from people who have said, you guys interviewed Bill Maher? Yeah, we did. Bill Maher in town at the MGM Grand Father's Day weekend for two shows. Don't worry, he's going to be back, though, in September and November. And we had a great chat with him. We really did. He's a great guy. You know Bill Maher as a comedian, a political commentator, the host of Politically Incorrect back, back in the day. day. Yeah. Now, real time with Bill Maher, which is on hiatus because of the writer's strike. But he has a long history of performing here in Las Vegas, too. Yeah, we had a lot of topics to go over with him. Him, and one of them was just talking about Vegas through the years. And I love what he said about it. So you'll want to stay tuned to listen to that. Also, we even chatted with him about his thoughts about bringing baseball here to Las Vegas. Bill, how's it going? Well, I'm out of work now because of the strike. But other than that, I'm, I'm doing okay. <laughs> That's why you're coming to Vegas to do stand up. <laughs> well, of course, that had been booked, and uh, I love coming to Vegas more than anywhere else, really, at this point. But, uh, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm very glad that I have a podcast, and I'm very glad I still have a touring life. Right, because right. Other, other, other than that, I just would be uh, twiddling my thumbs. We've been uh, shut down since April 28th. Wow. Gosh. Listen, I want to I want to talk about this Vegas show. I, I want to jump jump into it and talk about what we can expect when we actually see you doing stand up in a theater. I know you're going to be over at the David Copperfield Theater. Uh, the world's gone mad, so I can only imagine you have tons of material. Yes. I mean, the world's always a little mad, but it's actually more mad, you're right, than it ever has been. So, um, you know, I mean, look, stand up comedy is a different animal than uh, anything else. It's not a podcast and it's not a uh, real time episode. It's for laughing your ass off. You know, when people come and they see you and they sit in the audience and it's just you and a microphone, you better be very, very funny. And uh, <laughs> luckily for them, I am. Um, now, of course, of course, the, the fodder for what uh, makes me funny is uh, the kind of stuff that you would expect from watching real time. I mean, I'm not interested really in the trivia of life. I am interested in lots of things that aren't specifically political, like sex, drugs, and rock and roll. But, um, you know, I like to chew on the big issues. And uh, I think that's what the crowd who comes likes to see me do. So uh, I love to do it for them. And um, I can't wait to get there. So when, when you talk about uh, chewing on the big issues, I mean, one of the big issues we've had uh, recently here in Las Vegas are aliens landing in people's backyard, <laughs> allegedly. And I, I know that you've talked about this whole alien conspiracy theory thing. Uh, you don't expect to see any, any flying saucers or 10-foot guys with big eyes walking around over at MGM, do you? No, not at MGM, but at some of the other hotels, definitely. <laughs> uh, the MGM has hired the Ghostbusters to come in and clean the place out. But, yeah, there are definitely, there are definitely some uh, old souls who are walking around that town. 
No, uh, look, are there aliens? I, I, <laughs> that is not an unscientific question. Look, as, as a lifelong, uh, you know, critiquer of religion, um, uh, there are certain things I just think are silly that people believe in. But it's not unscientific to think that we may not be alone in the universe. But it is odd to think. I mean, I've been reading lately about how so there's so supposedly a whistleblower who says that he has seen a lot of... Um, there's a place, I guess it's near Area 51, Roswell, New Mexico, where they keep the crashed uh, spaceships. It is odd to think that they could have traveled oceans of time mm -hmm. and distance and yet crashed. But they had the capability to get here, but then they couldn't keep it afloat in the atmosphere. And there's, there's also some alien autopsies that they talk about. I, I, don't, I don't think it's impossible that the aliens are among us. Uh, and they're checking us out or whatever they're doing. Um, but, um, it, you know, uh, until it affects my life, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That's what I say. Sean and I have this conversation. He's fascinated about this latest uh, apparent alien sighting. And I'm like, eh, I don't care so much. But I don't, I don't know if I believe it or whatever. But it's funny. I go down the rabbit hole on the whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> Um, listen, let's talk about the the variety of people that you get at your shows in Las Vegas. Now, do you think the Vegas crowd is different than if you were to just go to a city and do stand-up in a particular city? I mean, because we have people from all over, and do you like that atmosphere better? Do you like that kind of audience? I, I It's amazing, because I started playing Las Vegas in 1982, if you can believe it. So this is like my 40th anniversary here. Wow. Uh, I was the opening act for Diana Ross when <laughs> I was 26 years old. Interesting. Um, yes. And in the 80s, uh, Vegas was not really that fun a place. <laughs> you know, it was sort of the end of the Rat Pack era. They had not been phased out yet. Frank Sinatra was still playing there and Pat Cooper and you know, Dean Martin and Sammy and, you know, that crowd. But they were kind of geriatric at that point. And quite <laughs> frankly, the town was geriatric at that point. I mean, it was just not a hip place. There were, like, no, no nightclubs like there are in hotels now. It was not a place where young people went. Um, I was young. I was 26. I was looking for action. I couldn't find any. <laughs> uh, and I certainly didn't have the money to... <laughs> <laughs> to involve myself in the action on the table. Right. You know, I mean, it was just a, a kind of a, a dead ball era for the town. Then in the 90s, Vegas tried to reinvent itself, I'm sure you recall, as a family-friendly place, which yep. is really stupid. Mm -hmm. And then when, when that didn't work, they went back to, okay, what happens in Vegas stays <laughs> gets all right. <laughs> you know, and that's what Vegas always was. It was an adult playground. And it still is. And now it's an adult playground again and has been for the rest for the remainder of this century. And it's the the older I get, the more I love it because I feel like I'm the other flavor that is in town. I mean, normally what people find in Vegas is very mainstream things, including magic and a lot of stuff that would not interest me. But Vegas itself is a big town now. Not even you know you don't even have to have the tourist. I get a lot of the townies who come to my show, and it's a very hip town with a lot of very hip people. Mm -hmm. So and and then you know even if I am only appealing to I don't know a quarter of the population that comes to Vegas, the people who want to see something a little smarter and a, and a little more uh, erudite and a little more. Uh, you know, shall we say, uh, debonair, mm -hmm. um, that's still a lot of people. Not, every, not everybody wants to go see Dolphins and the Magic Show and, um, you know, Rod Stewart singing his old hits. Some people want something different. And, and so I'm telling you, I enjoy Vegas probably more than anywhere else uh, that I play. It's, it's, a, it's funny. For me, it's a very hip town. It's not in general uh, always a very hip town. A lot of it is corny. But, again, there's just lots of people in town, and the people I pull are, are fantastic. Well, so like you said, back in the 80s, you would go out, you would be looking for, for action and couldn't find it. When you're <laughs> off stage no. now, what kind of action are you looking for? Oh, I'm not. I'm 67 years old. I mean, look, I'm, uh, look, I never got married. I don't have kids. Um, so I'm hardly retired from being a fun person. 
But I'm not looking for trouble. Mm -hmm. I never was. Uh, you can get into trouble in Vegas. I don't want to do that. Um, I don't gamble, but I love the, look, I'm only there for a weekend. So it's, it's the perfect amount of time. Um, and yes, do I go out after the show on Friday night? Absolutely. I've never once gone back to my hotel, right. uh, after the show. It's a, it's a night town and I'm an, I'm, I'm a night owl. Mm -hmm. So it's great. I mean, uh, what I wish they still had was late shows. Yes. You know, they used to have lounge shows. You go, you go see Don Rickles at, you know, one in the morning at some place. That's what they need to bring back. They do. We're on the same page. We're, yeah, we just recently did a podcast yeah. about that exact thing. We don't understand what the thinking is behind that, but it's like all that, and even like medium-sized shows, are, it's hard to find smaller shows, like you said, like lounges and stuff. It's hard to find that anymore. It's, it's big, big well, shows now. Yes, and, and stuff that goes late. And I think what what happened was the, the town got taken over by so many young people. It's such a great destination now for the young and the hip folks. And they go to the they go to clubs. Yeah, they're they're at the, they're not going to go see a lounge show. That's where they are. Right. Uh, but I wish there was just something for people like me who do, I'm not going to go to a club. It's way too loud. I'm way too old. It's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. But I would love to do something like a, a lounge show. But, you know, I tried to do a show for a while. I think it was when I was back at the Mirage. We tried uh, to do a show at 11. You know, George Carlin used to do a show at like, I think, two in the morning or something like that. Mm -hmm. That didn't work either. Because right. I think at that hour, people want to be in the clubs. Yeah. They, You know, the shows take place between like, Seven and nine. That's when you have to do the shows. I think my my show is at nine now at mm. the MGM. But that's about as late as you can push it. Right. Yeah. I mean, it, it's tough. I know. I, I have a, a couple friends who tried to do even 10 p.m. shows, and that was a struggle, and they had to push it back to start at 8.30, like you're saying, and nine. So... I don't know. Um, listen, I went to my first trip ever to Los Angeles when I did the whole, I'm going to do LA and do what I went to your show. I was in the studio audience of politically incorrect. I think Fred Savage was on the show or something. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is politically incorrect days. <laughs> yes. Oh, it was okay. way so it back. Like the 90s. Oh yeah. I, I don't know. Was it maybe 2000? No, maybe, maybe nineties actually late nineties. Yeah, yeah you're been. right. You're well, right. I mean, it peaked, but uh, politically incorrect ended in 2002. So yeah, okay. it could have been early 2000. Yeah. But I enjoyed it and I, and I loved it so much. It was me and my mom. And so we followed you ever since. And, and I know, I know we're going to get a variety of different topics when we, when we see you in Las Vegas, do you know, uh, can you give us any like tidbits that you're going to be talking about? Like we can, we are definitely not going to miss Bill talking about this when he's here. Well, you're going to get the whole panoply. You're going to get 90 minutes of of everything that you could possibly want an opinion on <laughs> that I'm going to provide for you. Of course, I'm going to talk about the political scene. Obviously, we're entering into the first days of the presidential campaign. There's a whole new field of Republican presidential contenders. Trump has just <laughs> been <laughs> arrested again. Uh, people are, I mean, I'm, I'm dying cause I'm not on the air. I mean, he, he's, he's, he's about to face 310 years in prison. Uh, I, I'm sure people want, want to hear me talk about that. And I want to hear me talk about that. Um, and then we're going to have to talk about the other side. One of the things I really love about the audience that comes to see me now is that is a mixed audience. And when mm -hmm. I say mixed, I mean politically mixed, yeah. which is the hardest thing to do in America right now. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it's not hard to find a racially mixed audience, thank God. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not hard to find a sexually mixed audience. But politically, people are in their silos. Republicans don't mess with Democrats and vice versa. Well, they do at my shows because... I mean, I'm basically a uh, left-leaning centrist. Uh, I basically side with the Democrats on most things, but the left has gone nuts in the last five years in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. And I'm the one who's not shy among the liberals to talk about that. I don't, I'm not on board with this. If I don't get along and get on board your crazy train, then I'm a Republican. Well, I'm not a Republican, but I'm not a crazy person either. Mm -hmm. So we're going to go after woke nonsense in my show, <laughs> because for, first of all, it's funny. Yeah. 
It is it's funny. very, very funny. <laughs> People say to me, why do you make fun of the left more than you're used to? Because you're more ridiculous. <laughs> because nobody used to say men could get pregnant before. I'm not going to make fun of that. Are you kidding? <laughs> so we're, we're going we're gonna to go after both sides, and then we're going to get personal, my personal. We're going to talk a lot about sex, and we're going to talk about relationships and stuff like that. Uh, it's going to be something for everybody, and I think, you know, like I say, it's a pleasure to be in, in front of an audience now, and they'll laugh at the Trump jokes and they'll laugh at the woke jokes, because most people, I think, are tired of the nonsense on the fringes of either side, and they're in the middle, and yeah. I'm happy to be there with them. Well, and I think I think that's a good point because I was talking to someone who I'd say leans Republican. Said, "Oh, I'm interviewing Bill Maher," and I'm like, "Do you like Bill? Bill? Like, you know, I don't think that I agree with a lot, but then when I hear him talk, I really like him. <laughs> he makes a lot of sense. <laughs> he makes a lot of sense, and I'm like, I think most that people, most people do not want this incredible polarization that we have now, yeah. and most people are not either Trumpers." hardcore Trumpers or hardcore wokesters. Mm -hmm. uh, they're somewhere in the middle. Now, there are people who come to my show who I'm sure, I mean, I, I've been asked, you know, who, who here is going to vote for Trump? Yeah, people applaud. And I've been saying forever, you can hate Trump, you can't hate all the people who like him. Mm -hmm. First of all, it's half the country. Right. Second of all, would I ever vote for Trump? No. But do I understand why some people would? given what's going on on the left? Yeah, mm -hmm. I get that. I get that. Right. I get people who say, yeah, Trump, he's a bad guy, uh, and he's a huge asshole. Oh, yeah, and he's kind of a criminal. Oh, and he lies, <laughs> incredibly. <laughs> oh, and he doesn't believe in democracy. You know, but on the other hand, my kid came home from school the other day, and he's wearing a dress now. <laughs> and he's five <laughs> years old. <laughs> and so I can't let that happen to my family and my country. And you know, I get all that, and I try to talk about all of that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And listen, Bill, I don't know if this is going to make it into your show or not, but what do you think about Major League Baseball setting up shop here? Well, I, I think it's about time. I mean, Vegas is a major city, like I said, even without the tourist faction, it's just a major city. I think it's probably bigger than some cities that already have franchises. Obviously, it worked well in football. Um, as a former minority owner of a, of a team in baseball, I used to own a piece of the Mets. Um, I think if I had a, a choice in this, if I had a vote in this, I would definitely say it's a great thing to have happen to uh, for um, Major League Baseball because you know expansion is sort of the lifeblood of the game. It, it's it, you know when I was a kid, I think there was 16 teams, mm -hmm. and now I think we have almost twice as many. Yeah. Because the country keeps getting bigger, and people need to be served for this. Yeah. People want to have a team to root for. So I think it's great. Yeah, I mean, Vegas has really become a sports town, so it's interesting. Yeah. To, you know? So a push for baseball and bringing back late-night lounge shows. Yep. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. That's our takeaway. That's our takeaway. Yeah, and when I said I was in the studio audience of a Politically Incorrect, that was when I was, you know, before starting my career, I was a longtime uh, local television news anchor. So really, being in your studio audience of that show, I remember, made me excited about television and is why I pursued oh. doing what I do. So thanks, Bill. Oh, well, that's great. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I, I, maybe now you can convince some of the younger generation to start buying TVs again. Because yeah. Well, a lot I, of these kids don't even have TVs, let alone watch them. I know. I mean, I, they see everything in small clips mm -hmm. on their phone. And if you talk to them about television, they're like, what's that thing? Uh -huh. it's, it's so true. Sean and I left our full-time television jobs in 2019 because of that and started this podcast and started a media company. But we just noticed the changes and we were like, it's just not going in the right direction. And now no we can have watching. conversations like this. No, I, I could never live without a big ass TV at the end of my bed. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Listen, Bill, thanks so much. We look forward to seeing your show, MGM Grand, June 16th, 17th, September 15th, 16th, November 3rd and 4th. And uh, we'll see you at the after party, I guess, wherever we decide yeah, we're going to go. I'll be there. <laughs> All right. Thanks so much. Thanks, see you Bill. This weekend. Take, take care. Okay, take care.
So much fun talking to Bill Maher. Gosh, we covered everything, a variety of topics there. So funny. I mean, I, I actually want to go see his stand-up. I mean, I think it'll be fantastic. Well, we know that he has opinions on just about everything, right? <laughs> we definitely do. Uh, Bill Maher will be back here in Las Vegas September 15th and 16th. Also, November 3rd and 4th at the David Copperfield Theater over at MGM Grand. All right. Well, from uh, comedy to country, let's get into some Carrie Underwood. Yeah, we had a little midweek sesh, a little chat sesh with Carrie Underwood over at Resorts World. We were lucky enough to be invited over there. We did a little private chat with her, actually. We didn't record any of it, but we had a nice introduction to Carrie and some one-on-one time, and I loved that. It was so nice, and she is such... A sweetheart. I love me some Carrie Underwood anyway. <laughs> I know, you do. But uh, she's great in person, too. Yeah. Um, Carrie is now back in Las Vegas for her Reflection residency over at Resorts World. She's returning after being away from a year performing her Denim mm-hmm. and Rhinestones tour. Mm-hmm. Um, but now she's back and ready to just focus on the residency again. I can't even believe it's been a year. I, I feel know. like... Wow. Yeah, I'm excited that she's back for 21 shows starting June 21st. And I say 21 shows in 2023. So uh, she's in town, actually currently rehearsing and getting ready for that show. So they invited us over to Resorts World for a little champagne toast to welcome Carrie back. You're looking at some video if you're watching our video version of the podcast. Looking at some video of Carrie's arrival and Carrie uh, speaking to the crowd and taking some pictures with her band. Yeah, it was such a, you could tell she was excited Mm -hmm. to be back in Las Vegas. As a matter of fact, she talked about that as well. Here's what Carrie had to say during this champagne reception. Well, thank you all for being here. And thank you guys so much for this. I feel, um, I feel very special uh, right now. So thank you. Uh, It truly was an honor to get to open the theater at Resorts World. Um, Be the first people that ever you know, got on that stage and um, the crowds have been absolutely amazing. We have had so much fun. This has truly been our home away from home and uh, we're excited for the rest of this year and hopefully for um, a long time to come. Uh, but we're having a blast, so thank you all so much. I am honored and humbled and excited. And when we were talking to her, we were telling her that we do these TV segments with KCAL News in the morning in LA. And I was saying, oh, we're talking about you tomorrow on the show. And she was like, listen, I love I love being so close to LA, having a show in Vegas. If I have work to do in LA, it's such a quick trip. And she was like, everyone in LA and Southern California, come to Vegas, see my show. So, I mean, she was saying that it's definitely one of those places that, you know, it, it's there, there are benefits of, of LA and Vegas being so close together that we can go there, they can come here and that kind of thing. Yeah. And you heard Carrie say it herself. <laughs> um, we are expecting a residency extension with dates into 2024 mm-hmm. and um, hopefully well beyond that as well. She's, I think, doubled down yeah. on Las Vegas. And by the way, we have to mention that silver jumpsuit. Yeah, everyone's she was commenting wearing on it. With the sparkly, I don't even, they weren't even rhinestone <laughs> boots. They were like giant gemstones. Wow, well, yeah. <laughs> when you're Carrie Underwood, I mean, she you can showed do that. Up. She's not like bedazzling her shoes. <laughs> no, I mean, she was top like, notch. She yeah. kind of resembled the Stanley Cup, didn't she? I know, she? she did. She did. And so beautiful in person. And you tiny. know, I, I've never been uh, so up close to Carrie before, you know, seen her perform and things like that. But I was like, wow, she's gorgeous. Because I know a lot of her fans always say, Carrie's so beautiful. Carrie's so the. So that, and I don't know if a lot of her fans have gotten that close to her. So just FYI, she is gorgeous in person. The real deal. Yeah, the yeah. real deal. And I look forward to her show. You'll be going to the show. I'm going to be in New York visiting some family. So you're going to opening night. Going to opening night. So we'll be talking about that um, in one of the next couple podcasts. Yeah. So. I wonder if she'll change anything up in the show. You'll have to let us know. Well, she does have, uh, I think, six new songs out right now since she was away. Yeah. So there could be some new music. She, I, It wouldn't surprise me if she switched things up. Mm-hmm. She doesn't strike me as the kind of entertainer yeah. who's just like, all right, let's set one show and we'll just do it for three years. Right. <laughs> I think she'll definitely switch things up and throw some new music in. And I know she's always done stuff with the kind of the NFL, right? With the, she did their like theme, is it the theme song or the open? Yeah. Is it Sunday night football? Maybe Sunday. I don't know. Sunday, Thursday. Yeah. But she's doing it again. 
She is doing it again. We know that. We got some insider information on that. So, <laughs> all right. Well, that, you know, we feel like we just had a lot of tips for you, but you know what? Let's do some more tips. Let's do tips. <laughs> I think we mentioned in the past that Park MGM on the Strip is the only casino that is completely smoke-free. Right. Uh, now, there is a downtown property that's also kind of dipping its toes in those smoke-free waters a little bit as well, or smoke-free air, I guess we should say. Yeah. Uh, the Plaza downtown uh, has just announced some smoke-free slots. Mm-hmm. Which I think is going to be huge for a lot of people. You know, I mean, there's constant polls on Twitter and people constantly talking about every casino should be smoke free. I'm one of those people who doesn't necessarily think that. I feel like Vegas is, we're just, we have things that others don't have. Um, I love that they banned smoking in restaurants and, and public areas where there's children right. in casinos. I mean, you, you can basically just smoke really just in the casino if you're gaming. Yeah. Um, I like that there should, I think there should be options uh, for sure. So I love this because I know so many people are going to go to the plaza now to play slots in this smoke-free area because it is something that a lot of people want. And the smoke-free slots is part of the plaza's Main Street uh, reimagination mm -hmm. is what they're calling it. Uh, and in addition to the smoke-free slots, there's also a carousel bar. Right. So in the That's valet, pretty. what used to be the valet area out front with the, you know, light canopy. Mm. It was kind of an iconic spot, still mm. is. But they turned that area into a walk-up bar. Oh, and gorgeous. they have some bar top uh, poker machines in there as well. It really is beautiful. They did a great job with that. They also added a, a pink box donut store yeah. with a, a walk-up window right there and some Instagrammable spots mm -hmm. with a big, big donut. Yeah. And a second-level patio at Oscar's Steakhouse. I love that. Yeah, it's like a rooftop patio. We need to go check that out for sure. And I love that because I always say patios, we need more of them in Vegas. Uh, I just think it's a great experience to be able to sit outside if you want to. I know yeah. sometimes it's hot, but at night it's a great place. And then a lot of, you know, most of the year we have pretty good weather where you can actually sit out on the patio. So I love that they added that. And then you can look down Fremont Street and all that. I mean, there's good people watching. Yeah, that's, that's for sure. sure. True. And we do need to give Jonathan Jossel, the GM over yeah. at the Plaza, a shout out for having big visions for mm -hmm. that property. And he's constantly debuting new new things to draw people in. So, you know, good job, Jonathan. Yeah, I, I love it. And the smoke-free slot area has a bunch of different slot machines that you can play. And it's also named after Brian Christopher. It's like the Brian Christopher uh, slot area because Brian Christopher actually has a YouTube channel where he plays slot machines. He has thousands and thousands of views. He's known for this. Yeah, popular. And, yeah, really popular. So they added a little social media area in there with backdrops that you can take group shots and selfies. So it's very social media friendly in the slot area as well. So I love the idea of all this. I think it's different. And I think, uh, you know, for anyone that wants to game smoke free, this will be the place for you outside of Park MGM. That's also smoke free. Yeah. So all this going down at the Plaza, which you can find at Main Street and Fremont in downtown Las Vegas. Um, I wanted to remind folks about a memorial that is in the works. We talked a little bit earlier about how we won the Stanley Cup, the Vegas Golden Knights, what they meant to us after the awful shooting that we had on October 1st in 2017. Um, I just wanted to kind of get the word out about something. If you're visiting us, if you're driving into town, uh, a lot of the victims and a lot of their families live in Southern California. I think it was like 66% of the people that were here at the Route 91 Music Festival were from that area. And so they're really encouraging people to come and stop by our Clark County Government Center and look at the different designs that have been created for a permanent memorial on the spot. Yeah, and uh, there are now five uh, finalist options that, um, five design options, I should say, that are uh, on display right now. There's a, a committee that will be ultimately deciding which one of those designs mm -hmm. is going to be built. Um, but there's also going to be public comment so that um, you can weigh in yeah. on which design is chosen. Go look at them and give some input. We would really appreciate that. It is Clark County. NV.gov is our 
website for our county and you'll see a big, big link there uh, with a nice little icon that will guide you right to the memorial designs. And also um, we'll put some information in our show notes as well. That is episode 173. We'll be back next week with more. Uh, We're going to Ocean Prime. Uh, We've been talking about that for a couple episodes now. We're finally going to get into this new restaurant uh, right there at the city center, right Mm -hmm. there at at Harmon and Las Vegas Boulevard. Beautiful new spot. So we'll uh, have all the details on that. Yeah, we look forward to that. And we're going to talk with the also the creator of Vegas Near Me, the app we always tell you about. It's a really good chat that we had with George about this app and everything it can do and all the benefits that it has for you if you're visiting Las Vegas or if you're a local. So we look forward to that. Check all our links in our show note. We got, we've got good stuff in there. We take time to put that in there. Please browse around. We curate things. We, we put links of things that we think will benefit you as a local or as a, as a visitor. So surf around and we'll see you next week. Let's go to Vegas, baby.